I'm going to do that. Dear colleague, welcome to, uh, allow me to welcome Mrs. Lodgehead. Uh, she is an education consultant within the Department of Innovation, Education Innovation, but as, uh, attached to the Faculty of Humanities. She is here to talk to us about the COIM. So I take the definition from the briefing she sent to Mabato earlier during the week. COIL stands for Cooperative uh, Inter uh, Online International Learning, and it is a way of broadening opportunity for both students and academic to take part in the international collaboration, teaching and learning activities. I personally recall uh, something that Professor uh, Duncan used to tell us in the uh, in the meetings when we were talking about student attribute. Uh, Professor Duncan will generally say that we need um, to to strengthen student global citizenship. So he wanted that as an attribute that UP students should have. So colleague, allow also me to thank Dr. Jordan and Prof. Mokalaka Fleshman for granting us this opportunity to hear for the first time or learn more about the COIL project, existing partner university, and for us to get involved in either existing project and or to come up with our new ones. So well, this is the way we will end this session. You can ask your question, type it in the chat, chat group. And uh, Dr. Jordan will be collecting all those questions and will allow uh, will answer at the end of the presentation. Uh, Marlene or Mrs. Lodgehead, the mic is yours. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for the invitation. I'm always quite excited to speak about Coil because I truly believe in the in the model and in the pedagogy and in the opportunities and value that it presents. Um, Yes, I happened to land into COIL because I am the education consultant for the Faculty of Humanities, because in 2021, Prof Duncan got an invitation from SUNY COIL, which I will tell you who they are, um, for some connections in some humanity modules. And I happened to be at that meeting. I happened to be the education consultant there. And that is how I am still um, in COIL, a little bit more university wide. But I hope to give uh, you more answers on the questions that you may sit with at the moment as we continue. Yes, and please do ask those questions and Martina will help me with the chat. Um, I'm going to put off my micro, uh, my video. And then I will start. I understand that you can see my screen. Is that correct? Yes, we can. Thank yes. you, Mariana. OK, so I will just um, continue then with the presentation. Um, Janine already mentioned the UP graduate attributes and that UP says that it aspires to produce graduates with attributes that will enable them to develop further as individuals, members of different community of practice and citizens of their own countries and the world. Now that is quite a mouthful. And how do we get to that citizenship, that global citizenship that we have already mentioned this morning? Um, the graduate attributes are divided, the UP graduate attributes, and I will give you access to the document if you don't know it. It is part of the curriculum development pol policy of the university. It is actually an attachment to the curriculum development, uh, your curriculum development policy. And we have four streams in our graduate attributes, basic values, skills and orientation to the world. Now that is a big mouthful itself. Then social skills, cognitive skills, which we use our disciplines um, to develop that, and career related skills. Now, global citizenship actually spread over all four of these categories of graduate attributes. And the 
COIL initiative really lends itself to develop almost all the graduate attributes, but then specifically um, this global citizenship. Also, um, the cognitive skills in the disciplines, of course, but definitely also social skills. And with that, almost implied in that, some career related skills as well. UP has a very strong connection to the world all over. I was lucky to, in 2022, um, attended the first Senate Committee for Internationalization and Global Engagement at the university. And it was very clear to me that there are really strong leading research projects that we have connections with countries across the globe strong curriculum-based cooperations across the globe, international, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary courses that we present and exchanges, student exchanges. So um, UP is very strongly connected with the world. But what was asked at that meeting was, how can we widen opportunities for global teaching and learning experience at undergraduate level specifically to include more students? Because it's almost as if it's an elitist thing, this international research capabilities or possibilities and the international um, teaching and learning possibilities. It needs a lot of money. It needs resources of all kinds. Now, the answer to this is almost COIL. SUNY COIL specifically, because it has been developed by the State University of New York, and it has been coined um, at around 2006. I had the privilege to speak to the, at this time, the mother of COIL, in um in 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 the southern university of new york and she explained to me that they have about i think it's over 40 campuses so she sits on one of these campuses and she provided me with the following slides that i'm going to use a few of um, with the permission to use them um, wendell hope is the mother of coil at the moment she's the director and um, she, I had a meeting with her last Friday. I was very excited to be able to, to have a personal meeting with her. So um, whenever you see any of these SUNY COIL stuns in the corner of the slide, it comes directly from her. And I'm very happy that I was able to use them. So what is COIL? It's all about connecting across differences. So it's professors, and lecturers and students working with peers in an online or hybrid environment to explore subjects, themes, issues and ideas. And it is really opening up. So what it is not, it is not just virtual mobility, just, just not a way of getting mobile virtually. Um, or some kind of digital pen pals, or inter take note, just an international guest lecture via digital um, mode or, or platforms. It's not just a distance learning course or a MOOC or an informal social media interaction of some kind. It's also not study abroad light, I love this phrase, which is unplanned or unstructured. It is something very specific. It is a dialogue and collaboration between people and classrooms sustained over a period of time online. Now this period of time can be anything from five to 10 weeks, even longer or even shorter but five is kind of the minimum. It's an, um, it is interactive social learning, and I will speak more about that, facilitated 
by a professor or a trained facilitator. Professor, you can read lecturer. It is meaningful intercultural experience. International goal-oriented activities, <coughs> which <coughs> can be facilitated via projects, so it's often project-based, and it can involve service learning and community engagement. But it, it does not have to be it. All right, so what is this COIL model about? <coughs> it is about two instructors with each their own classes and cohorts of students at two different institutions anywhere in the world um, with two or more cultures. We know that only in one class we have definitely more than two cultures there. Two, and more la two or more languages. In our case, it will definitely be always more. That connect to have an embedded part module. Now, I definitely say part module because it is not something that you are going to develop. It's not a new module that is being developed. It's just a connection on some parts of a module, which is then co-taught, and there can be a collaborative project, or if it is just a short time that you have this collaboration, it is just a task for students. It happens online. It really leads to some intercultural exchange and interdisciplinary in many cases. So these two instructors from these two modules can be in the same discipline, just at different places in the world, or they can be from two different disciplines. Um, and we will see how that can then connect. So to explain it in an easier way, what really happens here, um, you have course A at an institution B with a language or more languages, C in a particular discipline with a lecturer in that course. So there's a course with a lecturer at a certain institution in a certain discipline. On the other hand, you have course X with a lecturer at a certain institution, language it, it can be from the same discipline or another discipline. And these two lecturers then connect, they collaborate, they meet somewhere either at a conference or they can meet on the COIL fair or you meet someone just by accident sometimes. But I will also explain where you can meet your partner. They plan and they design on some COIL interaction in the discipline. So we can decide we want the students to work on a certain project for five weeks. The first week we are just going to let them meet one another online. The second week maybe we are going to give them something to talk about online so that they can get to know one another a little bit better and we are going to divide them into groups. And then we are going to give them a specific task to, to, to work on and maybe by week five, they are going to give feedback. Each group um, on their own going to give feedback on what they did. They are going to do a presentation. And you will see that the, um, yeah, so that is what the COIL project then can be. Uh, depending on the discipline, it can be something big, it can be something small, it can be just a feedback with maybe a few slides, or it can be a project that they have worked on. And I will give a few examples of those as we continue through the, throughout the morning. Um, student collaboration can entail discussions, projects, um, interactions of whatever kind on any platform that is convenient for, you, for them to use. It can be Moodle, it can be Zoom, it can be WhatsApp, um, it can be Padlet, anything that is easy for the students to use. Then at the end of this project, which may be five weeks, five 
uh, 10 weeks or two months, whatever it is, there should be some reflection within the bigger group, but also lecturer A with his group of students, lecturer X with his group of students or her group of students. Um, reflection on what it is that they have really gained from this interaction with one another. Very importantly is that assessment credit is given to course A students in course A. Assessment credits given to course X students in course X. So this means that assessment does not happen necessarily by all the lecturers. It's not necessarily the same for the two groups, especially if it is two groups from different disciplines. Um, if it is a group with language students in course A and maybe journalism students in course X, the outcomes for course A and course X students will differ. They will have to demonstrate different abilities, different capabilities. And whatever that project is that they worked on, course A lecturer should be very clear on what it is that he wants his students to gain from this. And course X um, lecturer should be very clear what she wants from her students. It's probably described in the study guide. And she marks them on those capabilities while course A uh, lecturer mask, mark, marks his students on course A capabilities. All right, so that has to be very clear because it um, takes out all the tension for the students and um, in the entire project. It just takes out the, the tension, it makes it authentic more, and it makes it transparent and just more realistic all in all. So that is the entire COIL pedagogy, so to speak. Um, let's just take a look at what is it that the lecturers will do? What do they collaborate on? They define the learning outcomes that they want from the entire project, but of course it should link with the learning outcomes in course A and in course X. Very important. It's not something different suddenly. They should determine the length of interaction. They design the comparative and collaborative activities. They select the methodology, how, how it is going to take place and the technology. They monitor student work and learning and they assess, evaluate student outcomes. As I said, separately. That is the ideal COIL model. Then um, they develop the students. What is it that they do? They develop an, interfect, in, an effective international team. Very important that one cannot just leave it to the students alone to do. One should support them and help them with certain activities. And I will also explain to you where we have resources at as UP to help you with that. They discuss issues on the course content as planned by the lecturers. They do problem solving as what the activity requires from them and they complete a project-based assignment as part of their coursework and then they get evalu evaluated on that separately. Okay, so um, yeah, I will get to that, but I quickly want to explain that at this moment still, we are until the end of June, we are a partner university of the SUNY COIL the Southern University of New York. <clears throat> so we have the resources available and um, I will share with you where you can find their courses. You can just also um, type in SUNY COIL and you will find everything that's available from them and you will see what courses one can attend from them online. I have attended the first two, the foundations course and the um, Coil, is it um, principles? No, I'm just, Coil elements, yes. I've attended those first 
to and it's really valuable. It really just gives you a little bit more um, understanding of what what happens there and what one can uh, guide students with to form these relationships and partnerships. And I will share with you a little bit more. So there are roughly in a five to ten way collaboration. These are roughly the four stages that one can go through. So one must take time for team to building. One cannot just assume that that will happen within one session of, hi guys, here we are. Um, who are you? Who are we? And OK, now we are a team. So icebreakers, team building exercises, developing of trust will take at least, I think, two sessions. Then um, a discussion phase where one can put students to talk informal, um, but kind of according to a um, guideline provided by the lecturer, uh, where the group formulates uh, uh, forms. If one used Tuckman's stages of group development, um, forming, uh, forming, storming, norming, performing and adjourning, it means that small groups go through certain stages and we must help them through that. We must help them to know what the norms are in group discussions. We must help them to know exactly what it is that they should be able to do it, or that they should be able to do. Otherwise, they get very confused and worried and, and, and frustrated. Then a project phase, a collaborative phase where they really work on activity, maybe less guided by the lecturer, but very with good instructions, instructions by the lecturer. And then a concluding phase where they maybe give their feedback, reflect, rack, wrap up, and they they find they do their final presentations of their projects. Um, all right, so that is roughly what COIL is, the, the pedagogy and the model. So who benefits? I've already spoken about this um, almost elitist kind of exchanges, uh, teaching and learning exchanges, of which COIL is definitely not one. So elite capture happens when the advantages, uh, advantaged few um, steer the resources and institutions that could serve the many towards their own narrower interests and aims. So it is a very narrow down thing sometimes, international exchanges. But public goods and resources such as knowledge, attention and values are unfairly distributed just as much as material wealth and political power are. So this is exactly what uh, COIL wants to flatten the earth a little bit more um, and give more opportunities for more students. And we have had so many experiences during the COVID period that I think it is easier for us now to do something like this than ever before. So COIL can provide global experience to more students. It can reach students as early as in the first semester, but you will see in South Africa it works a little bit differently, maybe only in the second semester because of time frames. COIL engage students more often, so it can happen in more modules and therefore it can happen more often in one student's lifetime. Um, it can integrate into multiple subjects, and we will explain that with the examples. It can sustain global engagement, and it offers a competitive cost per student when it is scaled. So um, let's look at how do we do this. So here are a few examples of quill collaborations. This was an example to raise public awareness of domestic violence between um, South African social work students on the one hand and journalist students in Mexico. So what did the students do? The students discussed issues of domestic violence and you can see how it is um, let's read first. Um, issues of domestic, 
domestic violence in cities where each university is located, focused on prevention efforts. So the students were placed in two groups and each group were asked to write, develop and film a public service announcement to be shown on local TV status. So you can see how it can be relevant for both social so sociology students, the entire focusing on domestic violence, um, what uh, can be done to prevent it from a social sociological point of view. Whereas the television broadcasting, those students had to work on developing and firm, uh, filming. So you can already see that if you put the students together, the social and you mix them, the social work students will be able to come up with the ideas, um, find out more about domestic violence and give background from a, socio a sociology perspective on what can be done to prevent it, whereas the journalist students will be able then to work on the firming, uh, filming the public announcement. And there, therefore also, um, it is necessary to assess the students separately, although they have this lovely international exchange and also learn from one another's cultures, from one another's languages, the differences, the the sameness of us as humanity. Then there's another one, uh, coverage of controversies in the press. Journalism students in the US and again, sociology students in Brazil. So students were asked to um, find coverage of controversial topics in print media, already covered issues. Discussion centered on why the issues were controversial um, why are they not just one, you know, so easy to understand um, in that society and why um, in which the press, the way in which the press covered them. Then the students uh, were then placed into groups to write articles on global issues that could be printed in both countries <coughs> um, on the coverage of controversies in the press. So students can learn that something that's controversial in my country, maybe around the gay debate, is not that controversial in South Africa, for example, and they can learn so much uh, more about their disciplines, different perspectives, etc, etc. There's another one, intercultural proficiency an oral competence in, in English. So these were both English language um, modules and the students had to talk to one another on common topics. Now, why this is so um, lovely is that sometimes, especially in the Southern American countries or in, in other Europe, I think we in South Africa sometimes underestimate how well our, our students underestimate themselves, especially in how well they are actually um, conversant in English. In other countries, there are they are much more language issues. I know that in Brazil, Eastern Europe, for example, the students struggle more. And what is beautiful about this exchange is that students from different um, countries can can, can see that while well, we are equally kind of struggling with this, let's talk about the studying abroad, um, mutual perceptions and its emergence of the whole topic. So, and let's then work around this English uh, str struggle and let's come up with this presentation. So they worked synchronously that synchronous meeting, group discussions and breakout rooms, but in between they also had other types of conversations, um, self-organized mixed groups, um, discussions, recordings in, in other platforms. All right, so and then they had the opportunity to speak, to listen, to make understanding and meaning, etc. So there are really so many different ways in which one can um, think around these collaborations and the idea is just to find the correct um, partner that is willing to work with you so that you can reach your outcomes 
and they can reach their outcomes. That is really, really very important. So what do we have at UP? At UP, we have several projects um, and I have the link for you. So when I share my slides, you will have these links. They will be active and you can um, you can use them to go to these documents. So at the moment, we have around 31 projects reported in this document. Um, of which a few are quill projects. So some are based on the quill model, but literally all international teaching and learning projects can be um, documented here. They are not all, all of them are not documented here, but many are documented here. So you can see a few ideas from other faculties, how they went about um, international changes, and you will realize which of them are quill projects and which of them are not quill projects. But you will have this link and you can browse what is being, what is happening at UP and, you know, maybe just get also a few ideas from there. The next step, so getting ready to quill, quill here used as a verb, of course. So how do we um, go about this planning a quill collaboration? And uh, the complexity there at the bottom means that you decide on how complex you want this thing to be or not. It is completely in your hands. Considerations to take into account, time and duration, how long do we want it to be? What language are we going to use? Are students on the other side able to use um, English or do we need some point of translation? Um, what is the course content on your side? What is the course content on my side? What is it? What is this project going to be that we want them to do together? How are we going to do assessment? Is there any part of the assessment that we we can or should do together or do we just keep to our own um, sake even we must remember that assessment is not only summative assessment can be done formative and maybe one can do some formative assessment together but there's no marks attached to that summative assessment definitely stay in your corner technology and access what can we do um, can we use Zoom? Is there anything else that we must um, use? Do they have Blackboard? Can we maybe both use Blackboard? What is possible there? Inter uh, um, institutional cultures and expe expectations. Um, what is important for my institution in terms of the culture of my institution. It's easier to work with the culture of the institution than necessarily with the individual cultures of, of students. So are we going, is this a really work and outcome focused um, orientation or is this a let's get to know one another kind of socially focused project that we want to do? And what is the available support? Schedule for developing a quill collaboration. So um, you first find someone who is interested to do it with you. You talk, have a lot of discussion discussions with your coordinator be, before you start with your co-coordinator before you start pulling any students into this. Um, take a foundation course in the quill um, at at SUNY Coil. And yeah, I think this should this should happen. It, it's best when you and your partner can do it together um, and then design the collaboration and then run the collaboration. In, in South Africa, um, it will mainly happen in semester two because the others, um, or it can happen in, in semester one because the others already start in August the previous year. So when it happens then in our semester one, we must just see that it is towards the end of the semester and that it can work for us as well. There, for example, is um, um, the different academic calendars of different academic 
um, of, of different uh, parts of the globe. And you will see that, um, you know, in South Africa, we are towards our, the end of our semesters where they just almost start their semesters um, in of, or the end of our academic year where they only start their academic year around August, September. So um, there is some indication in this calendar, you know, with whom you can possibly have what type of co uh, collaboration at what time of the year. Then at COIL, whilst we are a partner university and while we are still a partner university, we have um, access to the partnering fairs. It's a booklet and also an online really kind of find your date type of engagement where you can see who, who have what available that you can possibly link, link to. And I will show you where you can find that at UP site. Um, this is just an example of how complex you, how complex or uncomplicated you can make this for yourself. Anything from two weeks to ten weeks um, collaboration. Um, the Sustainable Development Goals, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, is very often a very nice connection point. Um, to find a theme for almost any discipline to connect with. You can have languages connecting with medical um, students. You can have sociology linking with um, speech language pathologists, Any uh, just about anything you can imagine. And then, of course, um, uh, there's also the link to the UP graduate attributes where you can take a look at what is important for, for UP and how can your discipline maybe link with another discipline to let this become reality. So different perspectives on COIL. We also have different perspectives at UP, and I will again tell you where. But yes, some really got promoted because they got uh, they were, um, you know, working on such a project. Some wrote a book. Some really were able to uh, present at conferences with their partners. We have at UP also uh, an opportunity for sharing with your partner. And it really transformed the teaching and scholarship from student side. You can read for yourself. I don't have to read all this out loud because I want to save time for, for questions as well. But you will see that students are really, really very excited about it. Also at UP, we have numerous examples. So um, there again is the SUNY COIL. Um, you will have these links. To, to connect to them, to see how you can, um, you know, also attend their courses. Because we are a partner university at the moment, you can have the courses half price. UP does not sponsor attendance of courses, but maybe if you can tell your head of department that you can have this for half price, um, they will allow you to, to attend that. So um, we have as partner university access to the partner bulletins, um, the training courses, the COIL foundations elements. The design course should actually um, ideally be attended with a partner. Then there's a COIL coordinator and administrator COIL um, a course as well. We have regular news from them, which I share on our platform. I will tell you about it regular webinars and support available from SUNY Quill. So what do we have available? Um, I actually just quickly want to skip. Sorry, this is a little bit misplaced. This is the different types of activities we have at UP, of which that undergraduate and postgraduate students collaborating in small scale tasks um, to broaden their critical thinking and worldviews, very importantly, is which is available through all the COIL projects that we have on that uh, document that I told you, the reporting document. So what we have at UP is a community of practice. We have a community. It's called the Global Online Teaching and Learning at UP Community. What do we do? It is all faculties and directorates may take part in this community. 
We have numerous, um, numerous international teaching learning projects, as mentioned already. COIL is just but one of the modules. You can self-enroll -en to the ClickUp module we have. Um, there's the link, there's also a QR code so that you can self-enroll onto this link. We are about 50 users at the moment. You get regular news um, on ClickUp as announcements. You get, um, I also send emails and our next um, seminar is coming up soon. So you also have access to the one pager reporting and sharing, which I've mentioned, where you can go and browse and see what people are doing at UP. And then our next COP meeting is coming up on 19 May. It's an in-person meeting, 9 to 10.30, and the invite will go out soon. So if you enroll um, onto this ClickUp module, you will definitely receive the um, invite for our next meeting that we have at UP. Um, and yeah, that is the story and the possibilities at UP. So I'm done with the presentation. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to ask, answer them if I can. <laughs> Thank you, um, Martina and Dr. Makwabani. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I mean, there's a lot here that was insightful. I uh, uh, heard many good, exciting things. And then, uh, as we mentioned earlier on, this is the time for questions. Colleague, uh, any burning question or clarity point? The mic is yours. Yes, Tabisede. Afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yes, so I wanted to ask regarding the project from, like you're saying that you gave the project to students in different parts of the world. Now, how do you overcome the time difference? That's one. And then um, in terms of like, when they're doing the project, I heard you mention that they do it over, I'm not sure if you said two weeks or a week. Now, in that two weeks or a week, are they still doing their coursework? Do they still need to do their assignment? Because one of the things that I'm, I thought about was that ish. Now, if I'm to fit this, I need to think of the time difference. I need to think of the fact that they're still doing other, other courses. How do I make sure that it doesn't affect their studies, but at the same time, they're able to partake in such a project? Because yes. I cannot um, put my head up. Yes. Thank you for the question. Um, and Therefore, it is also very lovely to become part of the community because um, people in the community learn from one another. Now, what I have learned from the lecturers involved in this up to this point is that time difference is definitely an issue, um, especially if you want to link up, you know, with people on the other side of the globe. It is definitely an issue. So, but one can find, maybe see if you can find partners more um, on our timeline, but um, I know that in political sciences, we have Dr. Roland Henwood and um, Dr. Heather, of, oh, what is now his name? They, they also linked with, they had a link with India, Brazil, and another country. At the same time, they had television broadcasts. So, they just decided that it will happen in the evening. Luckily, it is postgrad students. So that makes a difference, that, that whether it's undergraduate or postgrad. So they could um, link up the students in the evening and the others just had to wake up a little bit earlier. And they were of the opinion that, you know, it is worth making that um, <laughs> what is the world what is the word it is worth going through all that trouble that is what they said also with the calendars there were quite a number of issues so these are issues that has to be sorted out it's maybe also an issue to think out of before you find your partner is the time difference and then um, you asked about the the coursework yes the coursework has to go on Therefore, it will be ideal, and the the time frame I mentioned, anything between 
two to 10 weeks. So you can decide how complex you want it to be. You can decide how much part of the summative assessment this forms of the module or not. And then because the coursework does have to go on and students have to continue with what they have to do. So if it is just a small, you know, um, more of a cultural exchange that is valuable where they can learn from another lecturer in the glo globe and other people can learn from you, but also with some student exchange that is not complicated at all. But if you have a valuable um, project that they can do that will really help them to show the outcomes in your course, then of course it just becomes the, the assessment, so to speak. Is that answering your questions? Yes, it did, but I've got another one. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> okay, so I, I, I know you are referring to international, um, more like uh, interaction, but will it be worthwhile first trying it probably inside the university, maybe mixing, I'm teaching physics, let me be specific, maybe yes. uh, trying to work with somebody in engineering and then you look at someone that you can work with from the physics department and then engineering and then maybe you can try other universities within South Africa and see if it's something that, especially for the undergraduate, like in the foundation level. Yes, always possible um, to do it um, in the university as well or with other institutions in the country, <clears throat> um, especially if it's really from another part of the country. Um, it can be useful. You mentioned now foundation, and I know that I've mentioned it in my email, but I also must be very clear about this, that this have not been developed necessarily with foundation programs in mind. So it is not necessarily a foundation pedagogy, but with thoughtful and careful thinking, one can, um, you know, see that it is useful and valuable for the students in a foundation program as well. I'm mm. thinking across languages maybe and and um, possibly also STEM subjects. If mm. anyone has ideas, you're most welcome to share them. It's another hand. Maybe a comment because, uh, yeah, I see where uh, Dr. Tab uh, Tabet is coming from because uh, she, she, she already invested in project-based type of project uh, mm. uh, pedagogy in her own modules. I, I'm, I'm aware of that. So she was looking at expansion, but we can work. The, the, the key here, the way I see is to find a partner. And then look work around the timetable. I saw also a, a project by uh, Dr. Jordan with partner everywhere. So the time frame. Mm -hmm. So once you build that relationship, I'm sure mm -hmm. you can find a time that can work. But it's good, as you said, time you cannot just start coin. You wake up, say, Oh, there is my partner in New York. So we need to spend time <laughs> to get to understand each other and then the time frame what they're willing to sacrifice because it will come with sacrifice all the time because when it's two o'clock here yeah, maybe they're still sleeping or start waking up there mm -hmm. so who would like to work at that type that uh, kind of hours so it's a matter of building first the collaboration amongst us academics together and then go and look at the possible project and what i see you don't have to do all the modules maybe you can take two at the beginning maybe just one topic at a time then you work and see how it evolve, and then from there, then you can build up more and more of the project. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, type of thing, maybe that can work as well uh, in your line of ideas. Yes. No, I, I just kind of find it interesting, and I thought, you know, when you yes. mentioned that uh, when you go to university and then you feel like everyone outside the world, or even some people are outside your university, are way better than you. However, mm -hmm. when students with others it gives mm. them the opportunity to realize that look we're all on the same on the same uh wavelength mm. so yeah it would be nice even if it's just weeks or uh, two days or so where you get one university and then they kind of like exchange ideas and they present it doesn't have to be something big and i think mm. also for the foundation level it can be something that kind of motivates them to kind of look at into getting into physics <laughs> that's where i'm at right now <laughs> yes yes i think 
I think is motivation and really the feedback that we got from up to this point from the UP community and the lecturers that were involved in that. And maybe Martina, you can also vouch for that. But our students, almost all our students kind of somehow start off very unsure about themselves, you know, feeling that they may be not as good as the other students in the globe. And then they kind of see that there are other students with other struggles or with the same struggles and that they are not as bad as English, for example, than they thought and that they are not so, their ideas are not so basic and irrelevant as what they maybe thought. And they really almost through, through the, you know, throughout we get that feedback from the lecturers that our students gained confidence they they really their their world views opened up and there are really a lot of lovely um benefits from from this absolutely um, may I just tell them what I did? Otherwise, they think I'm perhaps wonderful. Um, Please, Martina, <laughs> you are, all of you are. <laughs> I did the e-community work. So that was uh, a community and then students from different countries involved with the community. And originally, we thought the, the kids would learn the most, only to find out that the students had this massive learning experience to work in teams sure. from different countries. So that was actually for us a wonderful uh, project to do. And we are rolling out the second one because we realized that the students working together and our students actually realized, like Mariana said, um, they realized that they are really very strong in group work and things that the other mm. groups didn't do and that pushed their uh, self-image. Uh, it was mm. so great that one of the students is now involved with lots of my, e my not I don't call it um, coil, I call it e-community uh, community work, that is now invited by Hong Kong to come and work that site. They were sure. so impressed with him. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah, so yeah, that's wonderful to hear. And of course, if nothing else, um, you know, that teamwork experience and and the global connection experience. Yeah, they are they are beautiful things that can come from this. But I think one must be you know, the idea must excite you. You should not just do it because you think it is now a box that must be ticked. I think that can be very difficult for you and the partner and the students. It must be something that you look forward to to engage in. Yeah, and maybe start small um, and then grow it from there. Mm. Can I ask one last question? I see that the time is almost yes. up, but just one question. Like, you know, when students or in general in groups, there are some challenges or yeah. like prior challenges that you're faced when you're high, in high school and you sort of like have negativity towards working in a group. How do you prepare students in advance to make sure that when they do engage with other students, they just they're not there as spectators. They don't even partake in what's happening. How do you make sure that they they participate fully? Of course, we cannot make what do you do prior to the group work or prior to allowing them to working on groups alone. I would like to share something with you and now I have the link, but I don't know how to get back into into our room here. Let me just see. Yes, I'm back. Uh, I want I want to um, give you a link of a resource that a colleague and that and I have developed. I click on chat and then what? Then then where do I put in this link? You see the oh oh. I see chat and I click on and chat. And then the chat and then the at the bottom it says type a new message. Can you see that? Um, if you open the chat, I click on chat. Click on chat and then click on it and then it will open for you on your right side and say type a new message at the bottom. I just see um, again the, the groups because a colleague of mine, your question, to answer your question, I've got a lovely... 
link for you if I now can just um all I see in or the can send it via email after this my, 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 my yeah can we do that I'm yes, so please. sorry yes, because I, I seem to all I see is just um the names of everyone mm -hmm. I cannot to the right hand side meeting please send it via email and that will be fine yeah okay i will send that via email sorry it is a it's a resource and cooperative and collaborative learning um with some guidelines for lecturers on that okay. so I'll, I'll be very happy to send it to you i'll do that okay i'll send it to you um martina and dr muamba kane i kana i said your name incorrectly earlier it's so fine. sorry Shanin, about that it's fine. <laughs> okay all right, so I think we came to the end. If there are no more questions, um, that will be it. I will send that link to you. Thank you so much. And my slides. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you very and much, Marina. Appreciate it. it. Was really interesting. Thank you. Yes. And for those of you who are really interested, please um, link, do self enroll into our course, and you will become part of the community. Definitely. Thank you.